Gossip, a practical guide. How to make defamation work for you. And you didn't hear this from me, but apparently Leonard did all the work while Homer just got drunk and coached the actresses, if you know what I mean. The Youth Club of Inglewood, which Iris tells me are a bunch of no goodnicks. And now our story. Pretty clever bird, the parrot. Oh, thank he can you. can actually talk, pronounce words. Of course, he has no idea what the word means, so we never take him seriously. Oh, she's a competitive talking champion. Gossip. They use words just as carelessly as the parrot, but sometimes we take them seriously, and often innocent persons are harmed. I'll say yikes. The gossips don't stop to think that words are dangerous. They influence our national life, and in war they are powerful weapons. Words like moist. Gossips toss words around as carelessly as parrots, with no more sense of the harm they can do. Did I hear somebody say gossiping is monopolized by women? Yeah, that was Far you. Far from it. Anyone who uses words carelessly, especially to talk behind someone's back, is a gossip. Let me tell you a little story about a gossip. A dirty, filthy, worthless gossip. This is Marion High, my school. I'm the principal, George Eastmore. I have a weird there office. There are some people in my office this particular morning, Mr. and Mrs. Gage and their daughter, Jean. They told me Jean would have to leave school. Why? Because of the malicious gossip about her. Gossip I, I had started. And I asked for details to see if we could do something about it. We began talking, even though Jean thought it was already too late. Between you and me, she's a bit of a misfire. Mr. and Mrs. Gage had opened a grocery store at the start of the term, and Jean helped out after school. She was in deep to Frito-Lay. Why are they hanging a portrait of Ava Perone? Usually it's difficult for a boy or girl entering a new school to get acquainted and make friends. But in Jean's case, it was easy. She's a very good artist. Her first drawing won a school award, and the prize-winning picture was posted on the bulletin board. That seemed to open the doors for her. Seth Fruiter camp. All the girls were interested and anxious to meet her. The first friend she made was Janice Nelson. You don't want to know what she's into. Of course, Marion High is co-educational, and the other half of our student body is always interested in a pretty, popular new girl. I believe the proper term is fresh meat. So while Jean's new friend Janice Nelson was introducing her to some of the other girls, Jack Monroe and Bill Ellis, our two ranking Casanovas, were making a little bet as to which would make the first date with her. You do it. No, you do it. No, I got the last one. You do it. Bill Ellis made the first move. He was waiting on the steps when Janice and Jean left school that afternoon and soon was off to a running start in the competition. The ugly ass shirt competition of which he was reigning champion. Jack wasn't called the best broken field runner in Marion history for nothing. Besides, he still had some trumps in his hand. He used his mob ties to have Bill murdered. Like an open convertible, which had helped quite a few times in the past. Ah, a compensation mobile. Ladies. Bill didn't know it yet, but he was about to be outmaneuvered by an old trick, the fake flat tire. Bill's not very bright. Jack was well in the lead now. He drove 12 blocks out of his way to drop Janice off first. Janice had long outlived her usefulness, and she knew it. Then he took his time getting Jean back to the grocery store. To return the unused portion for a refund. Jean introduced Jack to her mother and father, and presto, he'd won. He had a date with Jean for Friday night. Believe everything you hear about my daughter, son. From the time Jack called for her and all during the afternoon and evening, Jean kept thinking to herself how lucky she was that her father had moved his store here so she could attend Marion. She was a brand new student and already she'd won the art contest, made a whole circle of friends, had been asked to pledge the girls club, and now here she was out with the most popular boy in school. The pain of life was briefly obscured by fleeting enjoyment. But when they drove home, Jean began to learn a little more about Jack. His popularity had gone to his head. He was completely sure of himself, confident that none of the girls could resist him. The mayor asked me to welcome you to town with my tongue. Jean's slap didn't hurt his face, but it certainly injured his pride. He tried to laugh it off, but he was thinking that he'd have to get even. I'll tell everyone I'm gay, Jack that'll show her. time giving the other boys a highly colored version of the date. To regain his self-confidence and build himself up in their eyes, he added a few details. Remarks about Jean, completely untrue. But then, gossips seldom worry about the truth. It's probably all the drugs they take. Now the gossip began to spread. Bill Ellis colored it a little more and passed it on. Then Christine Manners took over. She added a car chase and left it open for a sequel. 
Make way for gossip. First, she used her lunch hour to tell the story to every girl who would listen. And that included practically every girl in the school. Even the ugly fat ones. That's what he said. She doesn't recycle. When she got home, she took over the telephone to call all those she'd missed. Focus. Yes, gossip spreads like wildfire, especially with the help of girls like Christine. And by the end of the day, the harm was done. Jean's reputation was ruined. Ah, never more. Ah. The next morning, Christine still wasn't true. She'd been jealous of the new girl's popularity and talent from the start. Now was her chance. But the picture gave Jean her first inkling that something was wrong. She knew it had been torn down deliberately. As anticipated. She asked her friend Janice if she'd done something wrong. But Janice was too uncomfortable, embarrassed to tell Jean to her face. They agreed to communicate through gossip. Everyone took pains to ignore her. She felt like an outcast, yet couldn't imagine why. Why don't these stupid moron hicks like Jean me? Jean was hurt and bewildered. Marion High had seemed so wonderful only last week. Now it was like a completely different school. Gossip. Ding! Jean was lonely and miserable all week, but she was still hopeful that once she was initiated into the girls' club, things would be better. Ah, However, she looks Jean like a post-op Archie. Even before the club scavenger hunt had started. But instead of telling her, the club president had made Jean's assignments far more difficult than the other girls, hoping Jean would fail, thus disqualifying herself. A technique she'd learned from an episode of Family Matters. Do I look enough like Susie Cattle? Not knowing this, Jean started out on the scavenger hunt as eagerly as any of the others. She was willing to work twice as hard as the other pledges to be initiated. Above all, she enjoyed the confidence afforded one by a clean slate and a good reputation. The rest of the pledges had finished their assignments and had been notified of their acceptance before Jean returned. Now the girls were really embarrassed. Jean came back with every one of her assignments completed. What could she do next? Nothing, Christine told her. She'd been blackballed. She wasn't wanted. Jack told us how you work in a grocery store that doesn't sell organic. Jean couldn't understand. She'd done her assignments as well as any of them. Why had she been rejected? Christine said Jean knew very well why. Because they didn't want her kind of girl in their club. Jean still didn't understand. Janice finally had to explain that they all knew about her. About Jack's story. About Tailhook. Jean was stunned. How could anybody believe that? About her. She should have thought of that before she went and got herself slandered. On top of everything, one of her investment properties defaulted. What's this we hear about you tramping all over the county? Everyone in the office is talking. When Mr. and Mrs. Gage came home, Jean told them what had happened. That she hadn't been accepted by the club because of the gossip about her. She said she was quitting school. Her father laughed for half an hour. So that's the story she told me. That's why the Gages came to see me. Why are they we all sitting on this side of the desk? She left school. But I asked them to wait. Give me a chance to do what I could. Gossip is difficult to fight. You have to go right to the source and stamp it out. I said other stuff, too. A great deal of other stuff. That's exactly what I did. I called in Jack Monroe, asked him point blank if he was the gossip. Jack was surprised. He thought only women gossip. Men just... Well, talk. I agree. He admitted he'd started the talk, but he never realized the harm it would do. I saw his side when of the I story. When I finished explaining what his loose talk had done to Jean, Jack asked me what he could do, and I told him a way, the only way. He thought it over. It wasn't going to be easy. It would be embarrassing, and we both knew it. But he finally agreed. So you want me to gossip about all the other girls in school to even it out? Got it. We'll do. Give Jack credit. He went through with it. His voice broke a few times, but he managed to tell them all that there was nothing to the gossip, that he had made up the story and was to blame for everything. But that wasn't quite right. He wasn't crying. I told them that anyone who listens to gossip is almost as much to blame as the person who spreads it. Even more so. We were going to discuss the problem in assembly, make the whole school aware of the danger, and make sure that no Marion student would ever again be hurt the way Jean was. Strict speech codes were put the in place. The next day, the whole student body realized what they had done to Jean. Now they wanted to make it up to her. She made a fresh start and was soon one of Marion's most popular girls, one of our real leaders. Unfortunately, she got what pregnant have been and dropped out the next tragedy year. had been a happy ending. But don't forget this. Boogers. There needn't have been so much as a near tragedy if our students, instead of imitating this bird, mm -hmm. the gossipy parrot, what? had instead copied three far wiser creatures, the three little monkeys, what? who see no evil, hear no evil, and speak no evil. 
From then on, students were afraid to express themselves honestly. Crimes went unreported. Trust vanished. Lives were destroyed. Bye bye